Today I'm going to go through five things that you need to know before you start your smart home or even if you have started your smart home and you're just at the start then stick around because you'll find this one interesting. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 1,500 classes. There's quite a breadth of types of classes on Skillshare. For example, I'm going to be improving my piano sight reading skills with build piano skills by Elijah. Also improving my YouTube skills to improve these videos with video editing with Final Cut by Ali, a great YouTuber. I actually also decided to do my own course called How to Produce Quality Videos Fast on YouTube. I know now it's Black Friday season and we're a lot focused on the buying stuff, but actually spending some time every week on learning for me is a must. The first 1,000 people that use the link down in the description below will get one month free trial of Skillshare. There's gonna be some key decisions that you're going to need to take. First key decision is your actual use case of your smart home. So let's look at your situation. Are you building a new home or are you retrofitting an existing home? Are you planning to stay there long term? Because that will drive some of your decisions. For example, if you're a renter, you might just go with light bulbs. But if you own your home and you're gonna be staying there for a while, you might go with light switches that are hardwired. A bit more difficult to install, but a lot more flexible. So the first thing you do need to know is that smart homes aren't magic. You need to program them yourselves based on your use case. Automations are very powerful and you can pick automation platforms like Home Assistant that are tremendously powerful, but you still need to know what you're doing and give the computer instructions. We are not at the phase where your home is able to self-learn automatically and autonomously and then create scenes and do things magically in your home. So you gotta get your clear use case. Three things to look at. How are you going to control your home? So that's gonna be with an app, with a wall panel perhaps, with physical switches, with buttons, with your voice, or are you predominantly gonna go with motion sensors and other sensors that will then trigger routines and actions. The second thing is a bit more technical thing. You need to sort of understand, even if you're not a technical person, how this works. This is technology and technology, sometimes tech doesn't just talk to each other very well. So these are called standards of communications or protocols. So your mobile phone has Wi-Fi and that connects easily to your router and to the internet. Some smart home devices like a LifeX bulb actually do connect to the internet using Wi-Fi, but other devices use other protocols, for example, Zigbee or Z-Wave. So that means that these systems will work really well together. And how do you get them all to work together? That's some additional complexity that you're going to need to bake in into your thinking. So try to stick as much as possible with one type of protocol when you buy your devices. Most likely it will be Zigbee, it could be Matter in the future, but that scene always evolves as the technology changes year in and year out, depending on when you're watching this. The third thing to look out is cost. You can start very cheap, but the more gadgets you get, and if you're able to get them to talk to each other effectively, then you are really building out a cool smart home, but it will cost. I recently tallied up how much I spent so far on my smart home, and that was around 10,000 pounds to give you an idea over the years. There's a video and I can link it somewhere or at the end of this video, I'll link it. That uh, was a bit of an eye opener, but you can also spend up to 70, 80, hundred thousand dollars or pounds if you are going for a full build scenario and having someone coming in and running wires and doing all sorts of work. So smart homes are not just little light bulbs, but they can become big, huge projects with blinds and home cinemas and all sorts of things baked into it. So you're gonna to have to have your eyes open in terms of cost. Is this just gonna be a, a hobby, which is an amazing hobby to have, and you just wanna play with microcontrollers, or is this gonna actually be something very, very serious? The fourth thing I wanna to talk to you about is a bit of a philosophy point, but also a technical point. Local control versus cloud control. If you've been doing some research into smart home, you've probably come across this term and a lot of debate and a lot of fury and emotion also comes out on the internet in forums when uh, these debates happen. But in simple terms, 
local control devices are devices that you have more ownership and control of. So once you've purchased the hardware, they will work without an internet connection. Some devices are going to be cloud-based devices, and these cloud-based devices will only work if they can connect to the internet. You might think, well, that's not a problem really, because I'm always connected to the internet, have a great connection, and who cares if, you know, when my internet goes down, I can't control my light bulb, or well, okay, fine. But think about this scenario. Think about that there are servers, so there are other computers, on the other side of the internet, outside of your home network, for example, that the gadgets that you've bought rely on. And if those servers get, you know, they're turned off or there's a problem or the company goes bust completely, you're actually stuck with a product that you can't use. Logitech Harmony could be an example of this. There could be many other examples in the future due to the uncertain times with the economy. So having local control gives you that peace of mind that you've purchased the hardware, it's yours to keep, no one can push and make your device obsolete from remote and force you to upgrade. So that's a huge consideration. And unfortunately, when you shop online and in boxes, in stores, it's not quite clear if they are local or not. But if you jump on, for example, a Home Assistant community on Reddit, then for sure you'll get that information answered. And the fifth thing that you need to know before you start a smart home is the type of software that you can actually use to control it. So you do need the brains of the system. You need something that will connect all of your devices together and enable you to create routines and automations and dashboards. If you've followed me for a while, well, first of all, thank you for following me. We're nearly very close to 20,000 subscribers at the time of recording. If you do follow this channel and you like this channel, remember to like this channel and please subscribe to the channel because that would be awesome if I can hit that 20k milestone. But let's get back to you guys. So I use Home Assistant. Home Assistant is the best automation open source software out there by a mile in my opinion. There isn't really a real competitor to Home Assistant that can match the sort of movement and the community and the options that's behind it and also the rate of change. But Home Assistant, I know I appreciate it. It's not for everyone. There are other options out there. On the other side of the spectrum, you have things like HomeKit, right? And you have great YouTube channels that just talk about HomeKit stuff. And HomeKit is, is an amazing product driven by Apple and it works really well, but it's closed in their ecosystem. And you also have devices that work with the Googles and the Amazon's versions and all their devices. And there are other minor players also in the smart home industry. So. Picking the software is very important because it's a tremendous pain to migrate from one to another. So if you build all your routines in one platform and then you say, well, I really want to start doing more advanced and complex stuff that you just can't do in that platform, then you have to migrate over. It's going to take a lot of time, a lot of pain and effort. Worse, you might buy devices that are compatible with one platform, but then you move to another platform. Those devices are no longer compatible. You need to like buy new devices. Oh, what a, what a mess, right? So I, I really hope uh, you don't hit that problem and you try, maybe you tried a few apps at the beginning, try to see which ones work. Mostly a lot of devices work with all apps, so you don't really have that problem all the time, but don't lock yourself into um, an app or a software without actually uh, considering it fully if that's what you want to use. So. With all of these five things considered, I really hope that you will start your smart home journey or you will continue it going into the next year. If you want to watch this other video over here, you'll find some more exciting smart home stuff. This is Geo from Smart Home Makers. See you in the next one. Ciao.